says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solterras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly undertorqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru was recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. 
Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repair it at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solteras VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repair it at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solteras VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repair it at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. 
before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solteras VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solteras VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. 
That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solteras VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly undertorqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations, Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richard at claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the mega Raptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. 
The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and a F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 period, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F-250, F-350, or F-450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. 
Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel power itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plane your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F-250, F-350, or F-450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plane your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus. The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? 
It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic, a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 R-19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 R-19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dynamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 R-19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 R-19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dynamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year.
the lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than dark horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 R-19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 R-19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro Performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 R-19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 R-19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro Performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 R-19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 R-19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. 
carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580 first test, benchmark, improved. Wilhelm Maybach was a legendary engineer. He was responsible for the ever more powerful engines motivating Gottlieb Daimler's motor cars culminating in the Daimler Mercedes engine behind the Mercedes 35 HP, the car that would redefine the company. Before that, his Phoenix engine would set the standard for modern engine design and cement his legacy far beyond the extremely luxurious cars that would bear his name in the pre-war years. And yet, it's this fancier association, Mercedes-Benz would choose to associate with the Maybach sub-brand more than 70 years after his death. A hometown rival to Britain's Bentley and Rolls-Royce, at the time recently acquired by Benz's German competition, the Maybach brand struggled as a quasi-independent entity in the early 2000s, only to be successful.
successfully resurrected a third time in 2015. Even that car, now more fittingly titled the Mercedes Maybach S600, didn't fully embrace the Maybach lineage, the name being a last minute addition to a completed S Class variant. Now, though, the Maybach idea is fully formed and has been infused into the bones of the new 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580. So successful was the old Mercedes Maybach despite its 11th hour adoption of the Maybach name, the brand has spawned entirely new variants, see the Mercedes Maybach GLS class, as well as this new V8 powered S580 sedan model. The original brood lives on with the traditional S680 V12 model coming later. Powered by the same mild hybrid 4.0 liter twin turbo V8 found in the standard Mercedes Benz S580, the Mercedes Maybach S580 makes the same 469 horsepower and 516 lbft of torque. It's assisted in its output by an electric starter generator motor in the transmission that provides up to 21 horsepower and 184 lbft at low engine speeds to boost and smooth acceleration. Behind it, the familiar 9 speed automatic sends torque to all four wheels. One of the most impressive and simultaneously least obvious technical achievements of the Maybach is in its performance. Despite adding 7.1 inches to the wheelbase, a better than first class rear seat, and a mini fridge to the standard S class, the Maybach gains only 280 pounds and adds only a tenth of a second to its 0 to 60 miles per hour time. Needing just 4.1 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, it's more than half a second quicker than the previous 12-cylinder Maybach S600 and a tenth quicker than the heavier but more powerful 12-cylinder Rolls-Royce Ghost. It's quicker through the quarter mile, too, than the old Maybach, just even with the new Ghost and just a tenth behind the new S-Class. You have to put your foot down to find out, though. Capability aside, this is not a drivetrain program for high-performance driving. So muted is the throttle response, you'd be inclined to believe the Maybach substantially heavier and slower than the standard S-Class, not one step behind. If you want the power, you have to demand it. You'll get stiff shifts to go with the quickness, a seemingly passive-aggressive side effect. Switching to the sport driving mode in a standard S-Class noticeably changes the character of the car, but not here. It's as if the Maybach has been programmed to remind you it's not meant to be driven in anger, even though it's built for such if the need arises. Emphasis on need, perhaps, you know, if you're a dignitary being attacked, an uncouth full throttle experience is lower on the priority list. Similarly, the brake pedal is set up for chauffeur shuffle staring around Manhattan, not for a reboot of the Transporter movie franchise. So delicate is the initial brake bite, we found it frustrating to drive. The pedal travel is proportional in length to the car itself and decidedly non-linear, nothing happens at first, but then stopping power ramps up suddenly once slack is taken up from the pedal. It's clearly designed for limousine stops, but you have to initiate them a block or two in advance because the pedal is so difficult to modulate in these scenarios. If you just need to stop immediately from 60 miles per hour, it'll take a minimum of 124 feet, 16 feet longer than the somewhat lighter standard S-Class. Should you need, again, need, to engage in some offensive driving, again, the important person ambush scenario, the Maybach will, in fact, dance. Wildly, as it turns out, if you or your driver sideline the computer nannies. The standard rear-wheel steering system makes this massive car unbelievably maneuverable, with a turning circle just 2.1 feet wider than the standard S-Class. As such, you can bend this luxury yacht into a U-turn at any intersection on a four-lane road, or two-lane road with a decent shoulder, in one perfect motion. Put it on a mountain road, and although the weight and length make themselves known, the Maybach handles like a heavy S-Class, which is a superb handling luxury sedan. Unlike the S-Class, the Maybach again lets you know such driving is not its intended purpose. Our instrumented testing bears this out, averaging 0.84 maximum lateral G on the skid pad to the S-Class 0.91 and a figure 8 lap time of 26.2 seconds at 0.70 average G to the S-Class 25.4 seconds at 0.74 average G. This result is due in no small part to the Maybox pre-election toward dramatic oversteer with the computers off and the need for long braking distances. If we haven't made the point clear enough, the Maybach has no interest in being driven hard, but rather the opposite, so much so you shouldn't even drive it in the default comfort mode. Rather, you should immediately switch it to Maybach mode, confusingly represented in the instrument cluster not as the Maybach logo, like a Bentley does in its namesake mode, but by the comfort mode icon with a little picture of a diamond shoehorned into the corner like an afterthought, or an attack of inexplicable nostalgia for 90s hotel marketing material design. 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580 First Test, Benchmark, Improved Wilhelm Maybach was a legendary engineer. He was responsible for the ever more powerful engines motivating Gottlieb Daimler's motor cars culminating in the Daimler Mercedes engine behind the Mercedes 35 HP, the car that would redefine the company. 
Before that, his Phoenix engine would set the standard for modern engine design and cement his legacy far beyond the extremely luxurious cars that would bear his name in the pre-war years. And yet, it's this fancier association, Mercedes-Benz would choose to associate with the Maybach sub-brand more than 70 years after his death. A hometown rival to Britain's Bentley and Rolls-Royce, at the time recently acquired by Benz's German competition, the Maybach brand struggled as a quasi-independent entity in the early 2000s, only to be successfully resurrected a third time in 2015. Even that car, now more fittingly titled the Mercedes Maybach S600, didn't fully embrace the Maybach lineage, the name being a last-minute addition to a completed S-Class variant. Now, though, the Maybach idea is fully formed and has been infused into the bones of the new 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580. So successful was the old Mercedes Maybach despite its 11th-hour adoption of the Maybach name, the brand has spawned entirely new variants, see the Mercedes Maybach GLS class, as well as this new V8-powered S580 sedan model. The original brood lives on with the traditional S680 V12 model coming later. Powered by the same mild hybrid 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8 found in the standard Mercedes-Benz S580, the Mercedes Maybach S580 makes the same 469 horsepower and 516 lb-ft of torque. It's assisted in its output by an electric starter generator motor in the transmission that provides up to 21 horsepower and 184 lb-ft at low engine speeds to boost and smooth acceleration. Behind it, the familiar 9-speed automatic sends torque to all four wheels. One of the most impressive and simultaneously least obvious technical achievements of the Maybach is in its performance. Despite adding 7.1 inches to the wheelbase, a better-than first-class rear seat, and a mini-fridge to the standard S-Class, the Maybach gains only 280 pounds and adds only a tenth of a second to its 0 to 60 miles per hour time. Needing just 4.1 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, it's more than half a second quicker than the previous 12-cylinder Maybach S600 and a tenth quicker than the heavier but more powerful 12-cylinder Rolls-Royce Ghost. It's quicker through the quarter mile, too, than the old Maybach, just even with the new Ghost and just a tenth behind the new S-Class. You have to put your foot down to find out, though. Capability aside, this is not a drivetrain program for high-performance driving. So muted is the throttle response, you'd be inclined to believe the Maybach substantially heavier and slower than the standard S-Class, not one step behind. If you want the power, you have to demand it. You'll get stiff shifts to go with the quickness, a seemingly passive-aggressive side effect. Switching to the sport driving mode in a standard S-Class noticeably changes the character of the car, but not here. It's as if the Maybach has been programmed to remind you it's not meant to be driven in anger, even though it's built for such if the need arises. Emphasis on need, perhaps, you know, if you're a dignitary being attacked, an uncouth full throttle experience is lower on the priority list. Similarly, the brake pedal is set up for chauffeur shuffle steering around Manhattan, not for a reboot of the Transporter movie franchise. So delicate is the initial brake bite, we found it frustrating to drive. The pedal travel is proportional in length to the car itself and decidedly non-linear, nothing happens at first, but then stopping power ramps up suddenly once slack is taken up from the pedal. It's clearly designed for limousine stops, but you have to initiate them a block or two in advance because the pedal is so difficult to modulate in these scenarios. If you just need to stop immediately from 60 miles per hour, it'll take a minimum of 124 feet, 16 feet longer than the somewhat lighter standard S-Class. Should you need, again, need, to engage in some offensive driving, again, the important person ambush scenario, the Maybach will, in fact, dance. Wildly, as it turns out, if you or your driver sideline the computer nannies. The standard rear-wheel steering system makes this massive car unbelievably maneuverable, with a turning circle just 2.1 feet wider than the standard S-Class. As such, you can bend this luxury yacht into a U-turn at any intersection on a four-lane road, or two-lane road with a decent shoulder, in one perfect motion. Put it on a mountain road, and although the weight and length make themselves known, the Maybach handles like a heavy S-Class, which is a superb handling luxury sedan. Unlike the S-Class, the Maybach again lets you know such driving is not its intended purpose. Our instrumented testing bears this out, averaging 0.84 maximum lateral G on the skid pad to the S-Class 0.91 and a figure 8 lap time of 26.2 seconds at 0.70 average G to the S-Class 25.4 seconds at 0.74 average G. This result is due in no small part to the Maybach's pre-election toward dramatic oversteer with the computers off and the need for long braking distances. If we haven't made the point clear enough, the Maybach has no interest in being driven hard, but rather the opposite, so much so you shouldn't even drive it in the default comfort mode. Rather, you should immediately switch it to Maybach mode, confusingly represented in the instrument cluster not as the Maybach logo, like a Bentley does in its namesake mode, 
but by the comfort mode icon with a little picture of a diamond shoehorned into the corner like an afterthought, or an attack of inexplicable nostalgia for 90s hotel marketing material design. 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580 First Test, Benchmark, Improved Wilhelm Maybach was a legendary engineer. He was responsible for the ever more powerful engines motivating Gottlieb Daimler's motor cars culminating in the Daimler Mercedes engine behind the Mercedes 35 HP, the car that would redefine the company. Before that, his Phoenix engine would set the standard for modern engine design and cement his legacy far beyond the extremely luxurious cars that would bear his name in the pre-war years. And yet, it's this fancier association, Mercedes-Benz would choose to associate with the Maybach sub-brand more than 70 years after his death. A hometown rival to Britain's Bentley and Rolls-Royce, at the time recently acquired by Benz's German competition, the Maybach brand struggled as a quasi-independent entity in the early 2000s, only to be successfully resurrected a third time in 2015. Even that car, now more fittingly titled the Mercedes Maybach S600, didn't fully embrace the Maybach lineage, the name being a last-minute addition to a completed S-Class variant. Now, though, the Maybach idea is fully formed and has been infused into the bones of the new 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580. So successful was the old Mercedes Maybach despite its 11th hour adoption of the Maybach name, the brand has spawned entirely new variants, see the Mercedes Maybach GLS class, as well as this new V8-powered S580 sedan model. The original brood lives on with the traditional S680 V12 model coming later. Powered by the same mild hybrid 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8 found in the standard Mercedes-Benz S580, the Mercedes Maybach S580 makes the same 469 horsepower and 516 lb-ft of torque. It's assisted in its output by an electric starter generator motor in the transmission that provides up to 21 horsepower and 184 lb-ft at low engine speeds to boost and smooth acceleration. Behind it, the familiar 9-speed automatic sends torque to all four wheels. One of the most impressive and simultaneously least obvious technical achievements of the Maybach is in its performance. Despite adding 7.1 inches to the wheelbase, a better-than first-class rear seat, and a mini-fridge to the standard S-Class, the Maybach gains only 280 pounds and adds only a tenth of a second to its 0 to 60 miles per hour time. Needing just 4.1 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, it's more than half a second quicker than the previous 12-cylinder Maybach S600 and a tenth quicker than the heavier but more powerful 12-cylinder Rolls-Royce Ghost. It's quicker through the quarter mile, too, than the old Maybach, just even with the new Ghost and just a tenth behind the new S-Class. You have to put your foot down to find out, though. Capability aside, this is not a drivetrain program for high-performance driving. So muted is the throttle response, you'd be inclined to believe the Maybach substantially heavier and slower than the standard S-Class, not one step behind. If you want the power, you have to demand it. You'll get stiff shifts to go with the quickness, a seemingly passive-aggressive side effect. Switching to the sport driving mode in a standard S-Class noticeably changes the character of the car, but not here. It's as if the Maybach has been programmed to remind you it's not meant to be driven in anger, even though it's built for such if the need arises. Emphasis on need, perhaps, you know, if you're a dignitary being attacked, an uncouth full throttle experience is lower on the priority list. Similarly, the brake pedal is set up for chauffeur shuffle steering around Manhattan, not for a reboot of the Transporter movie franchise. So delicate is the initial brake bite, we found it frustrating to drive. The pedal travel is proportional in length to the car itself and decidedly non-linear, nothing happens at first, but then stopping power ramps up suddenly once slack is taken up from the pedal. It's clearly designed for limousine stops, but you have to initiate them a block or two in advance because the pedal is so difficult to modulate in these scenarios. If you just need to stop immediately from 60 miles per hour, it'll take a minimum of 124 feet, 16 feet longer than the somewhat lighter standard S-Class. Should you need, again, need, to engage in some offensive driving, again, the important person ambush scenario, the Maybach will, in fact, dance. Wildly, as it turns out, if you or your driver sideline the computer nannies. The standard rear-wheel steering system makes this massive car unbelievably maneuverable, with a turning circle just 2.1 feet wider than the standard S-Class. As such, you can bend this luxury yacht into a U-turn at any intersection on a four-lane road, or two-lane road with a decent shoulder, in one perfect motion. Put it on a mountain road, and although the weight and length make themselves known, the Maybach handles like a heavy S-Class, which is a superb handling luxury sedan. Unlike the S-Class, the Maybach again lets you know such driving is not its intended purpose. Our instrumented testing bears this out, averaging 0.84 maximum lateral G on the skid pad to the S-Class 0.91 and a figure 8 lap time of 26.2 seconds at 0.70 average G to the S-Class 25.4 seconds at 0.74 average G. 
this result is due in no small part to the Maybox pre-election toward dramatic oversteer with the computers off and the need for long braking distances. If we haven't made the point clear enough, the Maybach has no interest in being driven hard, but rather the opposite, so much so you shouldn't even drive it in the default comfort mode. Rather, you should immediately switch it to Maybach mode, confusingly represented in the instrument cluster not as the Maybach logo, like a Bentley does in its namesake mode, but by the comfort mode icon with a little picture of a diamond shoehorned into the corner like an afterthought, or an attack of inexplicable nostalgia for 90s hotel marketing material design. 2021 Mercedes Maybach S580 First Test, Benchmark, Improved Wilhelm Maybach was a legendary engineer. He was responsible for the ever more powerful engines motivating Gottlieb Daimler's motor cars culminating in the Daimler Mercedes engine behind the Mercedes 35 HP, the car that would redefine the company. Before that, his Phoenix engine would set the standard for modern engine design and cement his legacy far beyond the extremely luxurious cars that would bear his name in the pre-war years. And yet, it's this fancier association, Mercedes-Benz would choose to associate with the Maybach sub-brand more than 70 years after his death.